So good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live today. It's Saturday, May the 19th, 2012. Our topic today is tips and tools for building your PLN. And I know we're going to have uh, an explanation for the PLN as our special guest, Tom Tim Willibus and Brett Clark share their expertise, and I've had a chance to do a pre-show um, meetup with them, and you're going to be delighted to see the resources that they have to share with you today. I always like to extend a welcome to um, our, of course, my co-host Kim Case and Peggy George, but um, my fill-in, Lori Moffat, has been absolutely um, such a support for me and for the show while she's and she's with us today as well and uh, Tammy we're in the chat who is providing us closed captioning so again I always remind people in the chat that if English is not your first language you can turn on the CC for closed captioning and you can uh, follow along as Tammy does that for us we have a conversation that goes very very quickly and what we'd like to remind you of is that we do have a website live.classroom20.com and we have an archives and resources page where everything is stored for you so if you have to leave quickly or you want to come back and review it or send someone to the to the recording it's all there we have an mp4 an audio file the complete blackboard collaborate file a copy of the chat log so if something goes by really really quickly in the chat or there was a link shared please be aware that you can go back later and grab that. So just enjoy the show and don't worry too much about grabbing the, the uh, resources because we've got them all set up for you and recorded. So here's where I get to, to work with the world map. So remember I said there's a whiteboard tools to the left of the whiteboard and the second one down is the starburst. So I need you to click on the starburst and drag yourself over to where you're located in the world. And so if you can't make that work, please feel free to type in uh, where you're located. I'm in St. Catharines, Ontario, and Peggy's in Phoenix, Arizona, and Kim is in San Antonio, Texas. And I have a empty mind for the next four people, so if they could type exactly where they're located or, you know, just pinpoint, because we have, somebody said we've got someone from Bosnia. I'm not sure, do we have someone from Portugal or, or Spain there? It's hard to tell. Uh, Shambles out there in Thailand. So, lots of fun. Yes, Peggy, you love to see all the starburst around the world. Portugal. Okay, welcome, Felipe. Okay, lots of fun. Let's move on to another resource that we have for you. And you're going to see that demonstrated later on the show is the live binder. So, it's, you'll find a link to the live binder. Peggy will type it in the chat. We'll find it in the resources, archives and resources page later on. But we have a compilation of our um, shows for you to review as uh, you find it convenient. And I'll let uh, Tim and Brett explain how to do that just a little later in the show. Again, I'm going to put you to work with some poll questions. So this is where you have to look for just above your name. Excuse me, just below your name, you're going to look for the little check mark. And you're going to click on that check mark and hold your mouse down and answer the questions for it. Do you have a Twitter account? And if you want to, please feel free to type it in the chat so that we can grab them all later and follow you. Mine is Lorna Cost. And I'm just going to show the results of that poll question. Over half of us have Twitter accounts. And if you don't, I hope that you're going to feel inspired to set up your own. I know that um, Tim and Brett are going to explain how to do that. So I'm going to clear the results and go to the next poll question which is, do you use Twitter as part of your personal learning network? Some people also call it their professional learning network, so it can be used in you know, two ways of thinking about the same thing. So a green check if it's yes, and a red X if it's no. I'm going to publish the results, and again, over 60 almost 60 percent are using it as a PLN. Clear the votes and move to the next poll question. 
have you participated in any education Twitter chat such as hashtag ed chat? So green check if you have and red X if you haven't. Going to publish the results again. Hmm, 50 50. Stay tuned. Because we're going to have a list of different Twitter chats, and I know you're going to find it very, very valuable. So let's move to the I think we have another poll question. We have the results. Do you use Skype or other web conferencing tools to learn together with other educators? Well, it doesn't have to be just Skype. It could be um, it could be something like Blackboard Collaborate or Adobe Connect, or it could be Google Voice, Google Hangout. Yep. Thanks for sharing that, Sarah. Okay, let's take a look at the results. About sixty percent are using these fantastic tools. end of our poll question today. It is my opportunity to uh, in introduce our two guests today, uh, Tim Wilmes and Brett Clark, and their topic is going to be tips and tools for building your personal, excuse me, or professional learning network. And I usually have to take a minute to introduce uh, our presenters, but today Tim and Brett have set themselves up and they're going to be a great tag team, so I'm going to leave it to them to take over. Uh, and uh, introduce themselves and go ahead with your presentation. First of all, on behalf of all of us here, we want to thank you very much for taking your Saturday and time to get set up and get your, prepar your uh, presentation ready and sharing with us today. So welcome, Brett and Tim. And I'm not sure who's going to go first, but um, welcome. Uh, thank you very much. We're thrilled to be here. Um, yes, thank you for having us. So we have a newbie question there for you, and I think you're going to be able to go ahead. What's the PLN and, and why do I need one? Yeah, sure. Let me uh, go and start off with that. This is Brett speaking, by the way. And um, again, just glad to be here, glad to be part of that. And um, what is a PLN? As you alluded to, it stands for a personal learning network or a professional learning network. And what a PLN is, is this a group of people that you have uh, grown to know, whether it's through social media or the person who teaches across the hall from you, that you go to to learn from. Uh, the great thing that would be an educator and, or, or just a person in general is that you know, we should never stop learning. And your PLN is where you go to when you have something that you need to um, just a, an ID you want to flesh out, or you, you, you're needing a resource. A PLN you can go to for support, you know. For if you know, I go to my PLN all the time for a variety of reasons. Um, you know, like I said, for resources, for uh, for to ask questions, or sometimes I just need, as an educator, someone to kind of just talk to. And uh, so there's a variety of reasons why you need one because this job of educating children is so important and it is very stressful and it's not easy and without that PLN, without that group of support, it, uh, it, it would make the school year go uh, go by very slowly and you would feel very isolated. And the great thing is with a, with a strong PLN, you don't have to feel isolated anymore and you can have a group of people that you can lean on um, to help you and to make you a better person and to make your students better people. And uh, it's just it's great to have one. And um, I, now that I have a, such a strong one, I couldn't imagine educating without one. I guess I'd just add to what Brett. This is Tim speaking. Uh, I guess I would just add to what Brett said that you know I, to kind of emphasize something he said at the beginning, which is that you know your personal learning network is. Uh, the, the members of that network come from a lot of different sources. Um, there, are, you know, we all have our local personal learning networks. The, the people that we uh, collaborate with on a sort of daily basis, maybe they're in our building or on our team or you know part of our uh, 
our PLCs, that kind of thing. Um, and then we have, because of the, the the advantages that social media and technology have provided for us, we ha we we've built those networks then beyond ourselves to not only professional organizations that maybe we belong to, but also just um, conversations that we're able to have via social media. And and I guess social media has kind of taken the the center role in this conversation because it has allowed us to so quickly expand our ability to find the people who we need to find to get the help that we need to get help on. And, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. I would say that uh, the other piece of that is just that word personal. I mean, I prefer the personal versus the professional just because I think that learning, if we're learning anything about learning right now, it's that it is so highly personalized and we, we you know, professional development um, is so much more rich when it's being guided by the personal needs of the person seeking the development. And I think that's um, been a huge advantage of this concept of, of developing your PLN is that I can um, grow as a, as a professional and as a learner on my own terms asking the questions that I need to ask. And so I guess that's what I would add to that. I agree. I, uh, great points. Yeah, cool. Okay, so this is our um, just our title slide. So we're going to jump way past this really quickly. I'm going to let uh, Brett tell you about what he does, and I'll tell you about what I do. All right, so this is me, uh, Brett. I am an e-learning coach, and my main role in my school district is I work in professional development to help uh, teachers integrate technology into uh, their curriculum. And one thing that I've really tried to focus on this year is that a lot of times um, it's easy to get sucked into uh, letting the tools drive your teaching because you find these cool tools and you want to try to find a way to fit them and you kind of maybe compromise content a little bit because of it, where I really try to work with teachers on understanding that, you know, set your goals, find in what you're trying to accomplish, and then try to see what uh, piece of technology can help you uh, leverage uh, to help you achieve your goal um, better. So don't just get um, bought into just um, the tools that are out there. But make sure that you are um, it's still learning this driving of what you're doing in your classroom. Uh, there I am on Twitter. I have Mr. Brett Clark. My website, educationdreamer.com, and my Skype is down there. And I'd love to, to connect people beyond just today. So that's me. And I'm Tim Wilhelmus, and I'm very fortunate to work on the same team with Brett. Um, this year, Brett's been embedded in a school. I was embedded in a high school um, prior to the job I'm in, um, and now I'm working um, at the, the district level, uh, working with multiple schools, and Brett's going to be doing that next year as well. Um, so it's really just an extension of, of you know, the work and the, and the opportunity to work with uh, so many learners from so many different uh, backgrounds, so that's kind of fantastic. Um, again, um, my Twitter and, and my blog and my Skype are there, and like Brett, I always like to collaborate, so if you uh, want to reach out, that um, would be fantastic. As a matter of fact, I'd like to take just one second to make a pitch. I noticed how many uh, international learners we have with us today, and that's fantastic, and I'm giving a... Uh, a session this July on um, using Skype in the classroom, and one of the things I'm trying to do is find some people who might be interested in Skyping with my into my session, um, and I'm trying to find people from across the globe from multiple continents. So if uh, that appeals to you, please send me a message through one of these uh, means, or um, we'll show you where our, our web where our um, email addresses are too. Um, and uh, I, I would be glad to um, get in touch with you because I think this is going to be a really kind of cool little session. So there's that. All right, so we're going to start off with talking about uh, Twitter. As Tim alluded to, Twitter has become kind of like the real kind of centerpiece mm -hmm. of creating and expanding your PLN. And I'm going to take us on a little bit of a tour. Um, uh, it's great to see so many of you already use Twitter, so I um, will try not to belabor too many points. I do want to make sure that we all are jumping off on the same point here uh, with hashtags, public reply, 
direct reply, retweet, quote tweets, and then favorites. And to do that, I'm going to share my screen with everyone and take us through uh, a couple different ways that I use Twitter and building my PLN. So let me just a second here. All right. Uh, hopefully, um, can everyone see my screen okay? Um, you should be seeing Twitter and uh, on my on my screen, and this is just the basic Twitter interface. And um, all right, so okay, good. Everyone can see it. Looks like. And so um, anyway, so this is my Twitter homepage, and. You can see how this is, some different tweets are coming in here. A couple of things I want to point out. So, one, um, hashtags. So you see that here from Mary Beth Hertz. She's tweeting from Ed Camp Philly today. And a hashtag is just a simple way to uh, curate some tweets uh, to uh, indicate that it's about one specific topic. Um, Ed Camps are uh, going all across our nation, and they're great events. If you can get to one, they're phenomenal. And uh, so people who can tweet from that are tweeting there from Ed Kemp Philly today. Now, a public reply is like one from Amanda here. It's a stump teacher. And so she put his name at the very front, and it's a public reply to uh, part of their conversation that they've been having today um, about um, actually teacher retirement. I was reading some of their stuff today about what the state of Illinois is doing and um and Maine has given uh sub teacher some grief here trying to get him to move to Alabama and um but that's a public reply and I can see the public reply because I follow both Amanda and uh stump teacher and a direct reply is a personal message that only the two people can see. And you can only send direct replies to people who follow you. And so, um, so if you want to send out a tweet, um, we can post a tweet right now. I'm talking about Twitter with, I believe it's live classroom 2.0. Is that the correct uh, hashtag for this? It's live class 2.0, not class. question. Yeah, just live class. All right. There we go. So we'll send that tweet out, and so then anyone else that's using that hashtag can follow it. So a couple of different ways you can follow hashtags, and that's good for um, for the chats. Um, if you're kind of a newbie to the chats, I recommend using Twitter fall, and that is this right here. I know it takes a second here to load up, but what Twitter fall does and what's great about it is that it allows you to add a hashtag in the search panel and then it, it fills this area with all the tweets whether you follow these people or not you don't even have even have to have a Twitter account to so use twitterfall.com and so anytime someone tweets out with ed with ed chat it'll come into this section here um and so this is a great way to get involved in a Twitter chat. We'll talk about Ed Chat here a little bit, perhaps. Uh, it takes place on Tuesdays. And Twitter Fall is a great way for a movie and newbie just to kind of watch and, and learn as Ed Chat goes on um, down this middle column. And another cool thing about Twitter Fall is that you can click Hide Panels, and then all you see is just the actual Twitter Fall. And I know of a couple of schools, they, they have their own hashtag, and they use this, and they display it on their um, televisions around their school to show what people are tweeting about with their schools. We're, I think we're going to be using Twitter fall at our district e-learning conference that Tim and I are um, uh, a part of uh, with our school district this July. So that's Twitter fall. I'm going to go to one more thing, and that is what I use. Um, for most of my tweeting, and that's TweetDeck. And what's great about TweetDeck is it allows you to, to put everything in columns. 
So I have in the far left my home column. This is all my tweets from everyone that I follow. I see it. Twim, uh, Tim has replied to me. Um, Gideon here has also participated in a webinar, uh, this one with, with Tim and myself. And so I'll be sure to add Gideon to my PLN uh, whenever we're done with our session today. Um, I'm big with the Flip Classroom. And so I follow the hashtag Flip Class. I'm actually presenting at the Flip Conference in June in Chicago. And then I always have Ed Chat as well. And then across the top here, you see I have a bunch of columns because I, I run actually a few different um, Twitter accounts myself and School Corporation and a couple other things that I do. And so, um, so TweetDeck is great for kind of the, uh, the more you get into Twitter and the larger your PLN grows, the, uh, the better TweetDeck is. So that is a... Um, a quick tour of this, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and um, get us back to our presentation. Of course, you know, feel free to throw questions into the into the chat side here, and you know, we'll try to get to them um, best we can during this presentation. Um, the one that I didn't really touch on a whole lot was uh, retweeting. Retweeting is kind of a great place to start. You see something that you like. Retweet it. A quote tweet is when you retweet somebody, but then add your own thought onto it, or perhaps you retweet it and then put a, a hashtag uh, that directs it to certain people. Like we use a hashtag in our school corporation. I don't tend to talk about it more later. It's a hashtag EBSC network. And so if I find an article, I think it would be great for our teachers to to learn about. I'll retweet it, but I'll do a quote tweet and I'll add our hashtag to the end of it. So to make sure people in our corporation follow it. And then favorites are just that. They're just the favorites that you have. Um, and I, all favorite resources, if I know I want to get back and try to read them later, and uh, if I want to make sure I save those. Um, so that's just a quick Twitter tour. Uh, we can spend the whole hour talking about <laughs> it, but we'll move on. All right, Tim? Cool. Uh, okay, so actually, this is I'm going to go directly to this and share this with you just so that you can kind of see where to get this. But in our live binder that kind of supports this presentation, um, we've got a tab called Educational Twitter Chats, and inside of that we've got a, a resource that I wanted to show you. So I'm going to share that really quick. Lee, um, let's see, share. And... Um, can, okay, so this is, can everybody see this? Has it come up? Brett, can you see that? Yeah, it's okay. coming up. All right, uh, this is a live binder that we put together for this, and it. I'm not going to go through all of it. These, these are resources for you guys to use. Um, there are some re, um, some articles on building your PLN with Twitter that kind of give you some starting points, pointers and that type of thing, um, some information about Twitter in general, um, and then, but I specifically wanted to mention our educational Twitter chats uh, tab and even more specifically I wanted to mention the, um, the last tab, sub tab under that tab which is tweets and hashtags we recommend. And Obviously, this is in no particular order, and it obviously could be much, much long, uh, bigger than than just this. These are just some of the um, people that we follow and that we feel like um, would be a good place to start if you're not following anybody, but you would like to use Twitter as a way to uh, extend your personal learning network in terms of education and education and, and ed tech. The um, the people on this list are all pretty good curators of information, and so there's a high value um, to adding them to your PLN because you're going to get a lot of resources very quickly. Um, at the bottom of the page, there or the bottom of the doc, there are um, hashtags that we recommend. Um, EdChat is obviously sort of the, the mother of all in some ways, um, but also EdTech is a great hashtag, EduCoach, 
EVSC network and like that. And um, there's another tab, sub tab, two tabs back that will actually, this is from Cyber A Man, one of the great curators of the web. And he's got a list of not only educational um, chats, but if you, uh, if you want to know when those chats are, are most active and live and when they're having sort of formal conversations, you can see that as well. So I just wanted to point that out. I'm going to go back then to the screen really quick. Uh, I don't know what I just did. Hey, Brad, can you? Oh, I got it. Anyway, I got it. So there's that. Um, and so one of the things we wanted to talk about was just how we maybe use Twitter and how we've kind of seen people that we work with using Twitter over sort of a timeline. Um, and so, you know, most people begin, I guess, by just listening. And we purposely chose not to use the term lurking or, or stalking. Um, but that's kind of what it feels like when you first start because before you really reach out to anybody and have conversations, Twitter is still an amazing way to um, find information that will be valuable to you just as a learner personally. So um, if that's the, the stage that you're at, don't feel bad because that's, a, that's where everybody starts and I think it's a, um, a, a perfect reason to use Twitter as part of your PLN just to begin with. The second, Brett, jump in here if I say anything weird. Um, the second uh, one is is, uh, <laughs> is discussing, and we felt like you know once you've done that, you know the next step really for a lot of people is they start they make those tentative steps to participate in discussions, and not not just in those sort of hashtag discussions that that you see, um, you know like Ed Chat or or EVSC Network, but um, also in sort of the more personal conversations that, so you know, I think anybody will remember the first time that they tweeted to somebody, took that chance to tweet to somebody they didn't actually know and got that uh, tweet back. That That's a, a very affirming um, experience and it, once it happens once, you kind of keep wanting to have those conversations and that's a much deeper and richer level of using Twitter to develop your personal PLN because you really are making those relationships and, and building those, um, uh, creating conversations um, that will ramp up your learning and I think we know that learning is social and so it becomes quickly a way of, of, of Twitter becomes quickly a way of reaching out and extending your your group, so to speak. Yeah, if I can now chime in real quick, Tim, if that's okay. Yeah. You know, one thing, like, I point out, like, Amanda and Josh, um, some teacher, were having that conversation. You know, that's a public reply to each other. <laughs> and you don't, whenever you see two people that are doing a public reply that you follow both of them, feel free to just jump in the conversation. If they weren't wanting people to jump into the conversation with them, they'd be having a, a direct message discussion about it. So I, I, I remember myself at first, I would see two people that I was following having a discussion about a topic that I thought, oh, I have something to say about this. But, but they didn't ask my opinion. Well, they're having a public reply conversation. So always feel free to, to, to chime in. Because, again, that's kind of the point of why you have public discussions on Twitter is that you're hoping that people that see this conversation will also to join in as well. And that's a great way to really get to know the people that you um, – I mean, I really feel like a lot of people that I follow on Twitter, I really know them because I've joined in into those discussions with them. Yeah, I totally agree. And then sort of that third stage – is when you start really um, taking a leadership role, I guess, in Twitter. And it's not just about, at that point, um, finding and gathering resources. It's not even just about um, curating resources and sharing them. It becomes um, also about creating resources. And so maybe if you have a blog, you start sharing your ideas via blog. Maybe you're moderating a chat. Um, for a group in Twitter, or maybe you are um, sort of actively building things that you think can contribute 
to the the learning of the whole group. And and once you get to that stage, I mean, it, it's very affirming because people are, um, you know, retweeting things you're sharing, and they're um, giving you feedback on how you can make your resources even better. And it becomes a, an opportunity then to really uh, feel empowered in your learning because you know it, it's like that old adage that you know the best way to learn something is is to teach it, and so I I really encourage you to kind of as quickly as possible move through those three stages because once you're in that that deep, Twitter becomes um, you'll hear a lot of people say Twitter is the best professional learning um, tool that they have, and I and I know why they say that because I I agree with that. Um, so, one of the things that we kind of wanted to talk about was how do you use Twitter to curate information for others? How do you how do you extend your Twitter reach a little bit? And um, so, I'm going to kind of step through just my workflow on this um, because there are so many ways to use Twitter as sort of the starting point for a much larger conversation and and to be able to reach into other tools that will extend that conversation and, and reach into other parts of your PLN. So I'm going to share my screen again real quick. And um, this time I'm going to go ahead and uh, step into Twitter first. I'm just in my regular Twitter here. And um, what I do first when I'm kind of working inside of Twitter is um, the first the first stage of that one two three that we were kind of talking about is is just the learning part and so I might see a resource that I think um, looks really valuable so this is via Edutopia and I Adam Bellow is an amazing person to follow and so this is probably a resource that I want to take a look at and if I click it. Um, here we go, it's coming up. We'll give it a second to, to load. Um, there's a conversation about um, letting students have the opportunity to innovate. And I'm We lose Tim. Hey Tim. Nope, oh, I think we lost Tim all uh together. Okay. Um, well, since we lost him there for a second, um, he'll be back here. We'll get him going. And whenever he gets his mic set back up, he can draw him back in. But what Tim was, was talking about is once you find a resource, ways to share it out. And uh, Tim, do we have you back? So your microphone just went back off, but I'm checking. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. Um, all right, so I'm just going to jump right back in there real quick. Anyway, I was going to share this uh, piece out, and when I do that, I'm going to add my hashtag for the EVSC network because this is a way that we share um, inside of our own personal PLN, our local PLN. Right, and when I tweet that. The reason I'm doing this and showing you this is I want to show you. Did you all see that? I assume. Did you see what I just did? No, I we didn't see your tweet Brett? go out, Tim. Okay, let me do it no. again. Okay, so I'll I'll tweet this and I'm going to put EVSC network. And since I can't repeat the same tweet, I'm going to put in Ed Chat also. Um, 
And when I tweet is that, that, is that, a, tw- is that a Twitter now? extension, Tim, that you're using there? It is. Is it not coming up? No, I see it, but I just want to make sure I okay. understand that that, that right. Twitter button in your toolbar is an extension with the browser you're using. Right. It's an extension of, of Chrome in this case. Um, so when I tweet that, I wanted to kind of show you where all where that goes. And so if I go back to Twitter and I re uh and I look at my uh hang on, sorry. So there we go. See it it's come up in Twitter. But not only has it gone to all the people who follow me in Twitter, that it's gone to anybody who's looking at hashtag EVSC network and it's gone to anybody who's looking at hashtag EdChat. And because I've connected my Twitter stream with a couple of other resources, it's gone there as well. So, for example, um, on our EVSC ICATS Facebook page, I've connected my uh, my Twitter feed to that. And so you can see that it's also appeared on our Facebook page. So people who maybe don't use Twitter can still have a shot at, at seeing that resource that I'm wanting to share out. The same thing is true um, specifically for our network, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but um, our network I'm go right here, has a, um, a Twitter widget that appears, and oh, when anything that has an EVSE network uh, hashtag will over time appear in this widget. And then also we've created So we've lost Tim again. We have some bandwidth issues. Um, so what Tim is um, sure that we've, we've used paper dot li um, to create a daily newspaper that um, people can subscribe to, and basically it just takes all of the um, the resources that we've used the hashtag EBSE network uh, on, and it places those in that newspaper. So now I've, I've taken one sort of moment in time where I found a resource and thought it was worth sharing and I've shared it in four different places um, to meet the needs of four different audiences. And so, you know, particularly for, for Brett and I, you know, part of our job is getting ideas and resources in front of people. This is a very powerful tool for us to be able to sort of very quickly um, disseminate information that we think is, is worth looking at. So I just kind of wanted to take you through that workflow. And I, hopefully some of you guys will uh, are already doing that, and some of you might um, try it's out some of those. Paper.ly is a, oh my word. a great resource. Hey, Riley. Because it, it gives that Tim said, it can, it can curate different hashtags. You actually you can have your phone or up to five different resources that you can put into a paper, like for example, the paper that I put out every day for my school uh, the, uh, where the Lodge Lions, and I, so I put out a paper for that and it curates like my tweets, EdChat, EVSC Network, and a couple other people. And um, so every day it sends out a tweet. People can, sub can subscribe to my paper.ly so they can get an email with it every day. And actually, paper.ly is one of the ways that has helped me really build my PLN because it'll, uh, when it sends a tweet out every day, it will say who are some of the top contributors to my paper. And that's, um, it, it's, it does a really great job of bringing things in. So, um, so anyway, paper.ly is, is, is great and okay. really um, she has helps to us stop. out. So, um, take her outside. Or... All right. I see some, of those, some great conversations going on um, about paper not lay. Someone asked if, if this is any a slip book. Um, no, not necessarily, just because uh, it tweets out an edition. It's more like a.
Yeah. Sorry, Brett, that was me. I clicked the wrong button. You got your mic back? Hmm. Okay, she can't be on Netflix because it kills the bandwidth, and then I'm jumped. I'm bumped off of this thing. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Brett, hey, make well, sure your mic it. is on, Brett. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Mama, is well, my I don't mic know where we now? are, but go ahead. Let's... <laughs> <laughs> All right. If this is a, I'm a parenting. And, in uh, real life, and... that's okay. Yeah. Keep on going. That's all right. <laughs> all right. So anyway, I'm not sure what the last thing you heard me say because I didn't realize that my microphone had gotten turned off. But um, so there are other great communication tools out there. So we've obviously just mentioned just a couple um, with Twitter and then Paper.Lay to kind of curate those tweets. But we also, as we t alluded to earlier today, we use Skype, Google+, you know, Facebook, Google Docs, all these same blogs. I have not dived into the world of Pinterest yet. A lot of people are. Um, but it's just not where I it's just not where I live, and um, so so there are other great resources out there. Uh, I really like Google Plus and Google Plus Hangouts. Uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, our our group had Google Plus Hangouts every day. The group that Tim and I uh, are the team that we're a part of, and Google Plus Hangouts at the end of each day to just to debrief, see where everyone was at. How we're one to one in grades six to twelve. We have about thirteen thousand netbooks in our school districts, and the Google Plus Hangouts at the beginning of the year was a great way for our own network um, with our district to really keep tabs on each other. So, um, so there's some, there's some other great resources. Uh, Chad, sure, absolutely. You chime in here. I just I would add you know I've I've just I'm, I'm watching the the sidebar and I, I've just gotten into Pinterest you know generally I've been curating my resources in live binders and I and I like them very much I guess I'm very linear in some ways and and like that but um, some of our colleagues one of our colleagues in particular uh, Michelle Green uh, kind of has started me in this Pinterest world and it's remarkable how quickly. I guess my my what I've been impressed with is how quickly people find one another in Pinterest and start sharing in a much in a very fluid way. So um, I'm seeing that a lot of people are kind of doing that too. So um, I encourage you to try it out. It's pretty cool. I guess there's uh, one. Oh well, Brett, why don't you do this really quickly? Because Yes. Yeah, let's talk about teacher casts. Um, teacher casts. We're, we're going to talk about already kind of some ready-made PLNs. And Jeff Bradbury, who runs teacher casts, and I've known Jeff um, really almost since the very beginning and inception of teacher casts. And that's kind of a, a quick question. I'll almost uh, I'll throw a poll question out just real quick. Uh, how many of you have ever heard of teacher casts? And if you have, just give me a quick yes or no. And um, I see a lot of no's coming in here, which is great because you're going to love, 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 love teacher cast. All right. So I, I, from what I see here on my left, is about 21 people said no, they've never heard of teacher cast. Teacher cast, on the screen here you can see he has six things he really focuses on. Podcasts, app reviews, uh, screencasts, blogs, his job center. He has an amazing live binder section. And so I'm going to do a screen share again and show you his website. Uh, he also has an app in the um, in the Apple, in the App Store uh, for Apple as well as in the Android market. All right, so let me pull TeacherCast site here as it loads in. And TeacherCast.net. Um, is the website, and again, um, he's the one who has headed up the ISTE Newbie project. So I saw a couple people 
uh, uh, put that in the sidebar conversation, and that actually is to send Cyberary Man to his very first ever ISTE. Um, you can go to his podcast page, and there's a weekly roundtable. I've done a handful of shows uh, on there. He has a great app review page, his screencasts, his video tutorials, the strain the best uh, apps and web applications that are out there. Um, his blog center is great. Um, as well as Chris Center is mobile app. I'm going to show you a couple things. Let me show you real quick his app review page. Let this load up. Um, and you know, if you're a school that uses um, apps, then he does a great job of putting together a great list of different apps that are out there. And you can just click on any of these and get great reviews on the different apps that um, people that, um, it's not just him doing all the reviews, he has several writers. That, that do reviews for him as well. And then also the great part of his is his blog section. And you can just, he, he brings in blogs from, from some great writers. Uh, I'm honored to be on there as well. Um, and some, some amazing people that he pulls blogs in from, some of the very best that are out there, Tom Whitby, um, Web 2.0 Classroom, Principal J. I mean, just some great, great bloggers that are on there. And just because Jeff and I are friends, he lets me be on there too. So <laughs> I'm very grateful to be part of his PLN, and he is a, a, great, um, a great friend and a great friend to all teachers. And um, he is one of the people that not only does he um, have a lot of answers, as you know, I think uh, we all can agree that in today's world, it's not always about having answers, but it's about knowing how to get the answers. And Jeff is somebody who knows how to get the answers. And I'm trying to get to And so I recommend that you get his free app for teachers. Uh, search it in the store. I didn't even show you the live binder section, but um, it's teachercast.net is um, is great. And again, uh, Jeff Bradbury is the, the guy who does all of this, the web design, all the curation himself. He is a music education teacher out in New Jersey and has just done a great, great job putting together an, an amazing uh, set of resources and it's growing all the time. So that's teacher cast. And um you go to the so, next one, Tim, and you know, yeah. I'll take this one. Cool. I just uh we were sitting around talking and we and one of the things we realized was, you know, usually when we talk about PLNs where we really focus on the Twitter and some using some of those uh tools that allow you to connect, um, Facebook and and Skype and, and like that. But we also realized like with teacher cast, um that there are a lot of ready-made PLNs that people use. Um, these are this is just a short list of some of our favorites, and um, so I would encourage you if you haven't seen some of those names or uh, run across uh, some of those places to to look there because there are some amazing conversations going on about education and about technology and about. Um, Learning. I mean, all all of the things that that draw us to be passionate about our work. So, um, if you uh, are looking for a place to kind of walk into the conversation, um, this is another great place to do that. It can feel a little bit like you're stepping into an ocean because these are are pretty well established um, conversations, but they do a great job of making new people feel very welcome. And so, I'd encourage you to kind of look at those as well. Um, the last thing we wanted to share, and I know we're kind of getting, well, actually here, okay, two things. One is we've created a squirrel um, page, and I guess that link will come up here in a second um, in the chat, but this, that has some of the resources that we've kind of been talking about in addition to the live binder um, stuff. So if you're looking for some of those ed uh, conversations, some of them are in that squirrel as well. 
And then we wanted to talk really quickly about this because we didn't want to leave it just on at, in this digital realm. And while this is still digital to some degree, it is very local for us. Um, we re we realized that we had a, a a lot of people. We were a, we're the third largest urban district in um, Indiana, and we have five major high schools. We have 40 schools, and we have a lot of expertise in our uh, corporation, but we also have a lot of people who need that expertise and who would benefit from a conversation. And if we could have gotten, we realized if we could get someone who had the expertise in touch with the person who needed the expertise more easily, we would probably ramp up our, our, our capacity more quickly. And so we decided to create what we called the network. And I just want to kind of show this as a concept of how you might locally build a network as well. And so I kind of already alluded to it a little bit, but I'm going to share my screen one more time just to kind of show you um, a feature of the network. Basically the way the network works for us is that we invite we invited all of our teachers and all of our administrators to sort of self select into this group. It doesn't cost anybody to be part of the group. It, um, we tried to make it where it's a reason, there's all kinds of reasons to join. And so we said, listen, join this group and we're going to uh, share with you resources as often as we can. We're going to put opportunity in front of you as often as we can. And in return, all we ask is that you identify what areas of expertise you have that you would be willing to share with anybody who asks. And so that was the network. And um, I'm going to connect us to our actual directory here. And when we go to the member directory, um, it's, it's really just a way for people in our school corporation, not just members of the network, but anybody in our school corporation, if they're looking for expertise, they can um, find that expertise here. And the first thing I want to show you is the uh, areas of expertise. And this is, I mean, we have 120 members, I think, right now. And these are the areas of expertise that they said they had. And um, it was just a way of formalizing what they were already doing. They, they were already willing to share this with, with the person down the hall or the person who uh, they met at a, a professional development or whatever. This was just more quickly directing people to them. Um, and so that's the areas of expertise. And then we have this keyword search, which allows people, if I'm looking for, for example, someone to help me with uh, maybe Apple computing, um, as soon as I type that in there, I'm immediately going to be taken uh, to people who have those skills and those set those skill sets, whether it's iPads or Apple computers or um, again that's iPad, you know, people who are who have already kind of walked down that path. Here's an iMovie, um, so that I can uh, reach out to them and and they know anybody in our corporation knows that they can reach out to these people um, and ask questions and and. And it's really just a collegial thing. And so, you know, building your network uh, can be international and, and should be. I mean, we, it's such a great way for us to learn about um, what's going on outside of, of our silos. But also within our silos, we can create personal learning networks that are powerful and that create good conversations and that push us to be better at what we do. So we did want to share that before the end. And I know we're already pushing time. So we'll uh, kind of open it up, I guess, uh, just to questions. OK, is the network limited to just your district? It is right now. I mean, this was sort of a, a way of, of creating an opportunity. However, I will say this, um, the uh, I would I would bet that if you reached out to anybody in that network with a question, um, they would be thrilled that they had the opportunity to share, <laughs> to share their expertise. Um, it's not part of the, the sort of social contract we created there, but I'd, I can't imagine anybody would turn you away. And the, uh, the second piece of it is that um, our hashtag, EVSC Network, is constantly fed by the people in the network who are tweeting 
um, resources. And so if you follow EBSE Network, you'll find resources um, that have some some educational value as well. So reaching out that way, yeah, corporation e equals district for us. Yeah, <laughs> Brett, thanks. Um, hey, no problem. People get asking about it in the twilight. Do you mean district corporation? Yeah. yeah, for us, for us, we've always, we're an Evansville Vanderburg School Corporation, and so, but we're it's San Diego District. Right. Um, it's uh, the, we uh, we created it using um, Dreamweaver. Um, one of our team members is an Adobe Education Leader, and is you know he has the chops to do things like that. Um, but if you were interested in knowing how he did that. I know for a fact he would be thrilled to share that information, um, but you could absolutely create a, a similar thing um, using web tools. So um, I hope people will kind of consider that as oh, we realized we didn't realize kind of the bang we would get for this um, process, but it's been very powerful. And we, but we did understand that technology was at a place where we could sort of streamline what was already happening and give people leadership opportunities and it's worked out that way. So. Great. Yeah, and so on that side, go ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry. Just, you know, so on that side, by using a name, you know, and I, and I brought it up before, but one thing that's going to benefit with us is that we've also are making a, a move to my big campus over this next year and that's going to give us a kind of another area that this that, that our network can grow into. Um, but yeah, at some point, that Ning is no longer, it's not a free platform anymore. And so um, with what Jared is, has built uh, for us, uh, allows us to um, work within our own framework. But uh, that's, you know, but yeah, and Ning, Nings are fantastic uh, because of the social network aspect of them. And there's a question, what do you think is the latest trend in education? Oh wow! <laughs> um, in educational technology, it's definitely we're moving into the print to digital um, question, and how do you move curriculum um, from being standardized in the in the sort of you know textbook form, you know, where everybody marches through the same set of resources, the same set of Quizzes the same and and to a more personalized type of learning. So I, I mean, definitely student-centered learning. The flipped classroom Brett would speak to and is huge as well. Um, but m right now, a big part of our conversation in our district is how do we help teachers um, become comfortable um, developing, finding, curating, and sharing out resources. Um, and getting students creating instead of just consuming. I mean, I think that is all one conversation that that we're kind of in the middle of right now and is at, at least very huge for us. Yeah, yeah I think you you're spot on with that. Go ahead. And sorry. That's okay. And what do you recommend for a newbie who is just starting out to build their PLN? I would start with Twitter. I promise you that you won't be sorry you did it. Um, that's that's the fastest way to personalize your learning. And I mean, the the list that I pointed to earlier that Brett and I developed is a great resource. I mean, we've used it over and over again with teachers, and it's such a great way to begin a conversation. Um, and I saw earlier somebody asked a question about do you have two Twitter accounts or do you have one? I personally just have one, but I don't use Twitter generally. I mean, I don't tweet things out that I wouldn't want professionally people to see. You know, so that's, you know, that's just a personal choice. But I also know people who have made, yeah, you know, they, they kind of live in two worlds in a way, I guess, and they and for them, you know, they have their Twitter account that's filled with, um, you know, the funny things that they like to read and, and like that, but then when they're in their, their Twitter professional account, for them, that's that's where they do their work in terms of um, their PLN. So, I mean, you know, I guess it's it's either way. I just can't manage to. I'd, I, <laughs> I'd go insane. So. 
Yeah, I just have I have one, my own personal one that I run. Just um, so I I, I kind of say that in the eighty twenty rule, but eighty percent of my tweets are uh, about education, and then the other twenty percent of my tweets are you know adorable pictures of my three uh, boys and things <laughs> like that. So it's just um um it's whatever I do on different things. The other Twitter account that I run is. For like Tim and I actually run or have one for our upcoming conference this July. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I pretty much just do do this. I run a couple. I'm a youth pastor as well, and I run our church's Twitter, social media, reach, and all that stuff. Well, uh, you know, you. Uh, go ahead. Go no, go ahead. I was just going to share. I, I have we have a lot of. I'm I'm watching the the chat, and we have a lot of teachers who also use sort of class class Twitter accounts. They have a separate account that they use for their kids. And I see that as, I understand that a little better because, you know, their professional world in terms of who they're interacting with collegially and their professional world in terms of who they're interacting with as their students. And um, I'm thinking of, of one of our, our um, amazing uh, history teachers at one of our high schools, he does, he has a, a separate account, for example, to tweet um, to and with his students, um, not only kind of keeping them up to date on what's going on, you know, in their classes, you know, and that kind of thing, but also he uses that as sort of a back channel for the class and as an opportunity for students to um, interact with like media when they're watching a film, for example, and that type of thing, and and it's it's been pretty powerful. So. Great, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and formally close out the show, but we're going to uh, continue to take questions. So, if you have to leave, we certainly understand. But if you would like to continue to stay on and ask questions, we invite you to do so. Um, one class and or school that I'm thinking of is Ron Clark Academy, uh, Chris Ants, if you want to look that up. That's uh, a school that is, um, they do personalized learning as well as they post things that are going on in their classroom, in their classroom as well as in their, on their campus. So I'm going to go ahead and close things out. And we want to let you know that on May 22nd, that Steve Hargadon is going to be interviewing John Idelson. And on the 24th, he'll be talking with Elizabeth Merritt. And on May 29th, he'll be interviewing Brian Alexander. And we will not have a show on the Memorial Day weekend, but we will have a fantastic show on June the 2nd with Travis Allen, who's a a young man, a student who started the iSchool initiative on becoming a mobile learner and igni kind of uh, igniting the passion in other students uh, to become enthusiastic about learning. He's a student himself in college, I believe. Um, he was a high school student when he started this initiative. So that's going to be something very interesting that you're going to want to hear. Um, very exciting. And we want to let you know that you can nominate a featured teacher, that any educator that you know that's um, on a campus working with teachers or working with students. Just fill out the form at tinyurl.com slash cr20live and then featured teacher, N-O-M-I-N-A-T. And that's um, also a tab in the live binder. If you can't remember it, you don't need to really worry about it. It's always in our live binder resource, as well as the survey link. But when you exit the session, the survey will automatically open in your browser. You don't need to worry about that. And we hope that you'll give us feedback on today's session, as well as future sessions that you would like to see, uh, as well as future guests and topics. Uh, we always read those and take that into, and that's how we develop our future sessions. So please take time to, to fill that out and give us some great information. If you'd like a professional development certificate in that survey, there's an area for you to put your name and your email address, and Peggy will give you a uh, 
send that out to you via email. So give us a few days to get that out to you. Um, and that is, you can put that information in the survey. And if for some reason when you watch the, um, when you watch any of our archives on our archives and resources page, you can always fill out that survey link at tinyurl that Peggy has posted in the chat and request a survey that way as well. And then Peggy will send you the certificate for, for watching that uh, video through the archives. You can also subscribe to our archives through the iTunes U channel, the MP3 or the MP4s, and take us with you wherever you go. You can also subscribe to our blog posts on our archives page, page um, through any RSS feed aggregator as well if you didn't want to go through iTunes U. And we want to extend a very special thank you to Tim and Brett, as well as to Steve Hargadon and to Weebly and to each of you for posting questions uh, and participating in today's session. We do have, um, and to Blackboard for providing this forum for us to meet each and every week. And we do have sessions that are for K-12 and some for um, higher ed, mainly for K-12, but you can modify some of the content to um, fit for higher ed. A lot of higher ed uh, professors have their, their uh, pre-service teachers join us. But um, it kind of depends on the content and how you want to approach it and develop it. And then you can take that and modify it and make it fit your content or your area. Um, so it, it depends on your approach. You can take the information and use it for K-12 or higher ed, depending on um, the way that you uh, apply the information. So now we're going to take questions and go uh, back to Brett and to Tim. Um, I'm not sure that I saw any questions, um, so I might have missed some. And if I did, um, uh, please continue to type them in the chat. If you would like to uh, take the mic, we ask that you just raise your hand, clicking on the hand, and we'll give you the mic, and you can ask your question that way. Um, and Lori, if you saw any questions that I missed, um, please uh, let me know as well. This has been great. We want to digest a lot of these things. And let me give you the mic, Paula. There you go. Hi, everyone. This is Paula Novel from New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, Tim and Brett, thank you so much for sharing this. Uh, I will be presenting at ISD this summer on um, the power of PLN, so I've got a few things I'll be <coughs> borrowing from your session today <laughs> to add to ours. Uh, my question is um, about, I, I, we kind of touched on it, if a newbie wants to build a PLN and they're not quite ready for Twitter, I should have put that in my question, what else would you suggest? to get them started without getting them on Twitter right away? Because Twitter just seems to be that tool that the newbie just doesn't want to go to right away. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Um, let me start off by saying that if you want to build your PLN in without Twitter, I think that maybe you start with something, maybe as simple as just um, Zite, you know, some type of uh, curation tool like that or Flipboard where they could go and they can just start following and reading resources that are going to um, get them interested in what these people are writing, you know, blogs, finding uh, um, things of all those nature, again, teacher cats. Just going to his website and just adding that one person to their PLN of, and going through and reading those blogs and reading those things and then um, seeing what what is, what is out there, but then, of course, as, as Tim talked about, and rightfully so, you know, some some of the best people in my PLN are people that I see on a weekly basis at work, and making sure that you're having those uh, open and honest conversations. That if your school doesn't do PLCs, maybe 
they would be interested in, in, in working towards those and, and helping to begin those in their schools. And so um, by, you know, the Twitter is definitely not the most, my most powerful PLN, but my, my best PLN, my most trusted resources, are people like Tim and other great people on our, uh, on our technology integration team. And, um, you know, but I think for someone who doesn't want to go to Twitter, make sure they have a strong relationship or encourage them to have a strong relationship with those that they work with and then to find somebody like, like TeacherCast and just start there. Um, or like the Educators PLN, which is a lot like Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. It's another great place to start. You don't have to have a Twitter account to be a member of the Educators PLN. And that's another kind of great kind of Facebook-ish type, type of place to, to begin. Uh, Tim, thoughts? Yeah, you hit a, a lot of things I would have said. I, I especially like what you said about the the blogs. Um, you know, I think probably that's where I started. If I think back, was um, commenting on blogs and realizing that suddenly I was having a conversation with an author of an article that I enjoyed or or someone whose thoughts I respected a great deal, and that that um, there's a little bit of addictiveness to that. Um, you know, socially it's addictive anyway, but on top of that, you, you feel a certain level of affirmation because suddenly, wow, I'm talking to somebody who, if they had come to our, uh, you know, to our district as a, as a presenter, for example, I'm not sure I would have necessarily stepped up and, and uh, had a conversation Thank you. I, I had sort of forgot. I guess is when I think back. Kind of and, and it's kind of it's funny. Kind of I, think I think socially, socially we, we we're growing as social media expands because we're starting to realize that there's there's no. Is somebody using? Thank you, guys. Thanks, Paula. And I'd forgotten that I started out with blogs. Yeah. Okay, and then moved up yeah. until you feel comfortable because Twitter can be overwhelming and you start with a few of those, like Peggy said, the educational ones, and then move from there. Thanks, Paula, for asking that question. Okay, Chrysanth? Yeah, let's see. Let me give you the you have the mic. You click the talk button in the top left. Um, okay. There you go. There you go. Okay. Hello, first of all. And thank you for uh being part of such a nice uh conversation. I have got some questions because um, in our school in Greece, we are using a lot of these um, Twitter and uh, Edmodo that I see there. That's why, sorry, that was my baby son. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I was wondering, is there um, a possibility to, um, let's say, are all these things very secure? For our students, because I teach in high school, internet is allowed throughout the school, and uh, right now we're getting ready to be personalized learning. That's why I was asking for uh, other schools. So I was wondering, do you think that all these things are secure for the students? Yeah, that's, that's a great, great question, Tim. Well, you can Go ahead and start with this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do. You know, I think that the real issue is that um, all of us need to be having meaningful conversations about the technology. The technology itself is um, not a threat, um, but obviously there are, um, you know, things that, that kids can, uh, choices that they can make that aren't good and choices that others can make that can affect kids that aren't good. And so having an open um, conversation with everybody who's involved, the teachers, the administration, the students, and the parents um, is really important. I, I think one of our big failures 
so far in this in this endeavor all over has been that you know um, we've we've been afraid to have meaningful conversations about how technology affects people, how it affects students and their development, but also how it affects um, adults and and their learning. And, and so part of what we've kind of done is created sort of this mystery box where people are afraid of um, technology because they're not familiar with it. And if we were to treat it more as um, what it is, which is just a tool, but then have, uh, co you know, constant and meaningful conversations about how do we responsibly and, and, and meaningfully use those tools, then I think that our concerns about our, I hope I'm answering the right question, uh, the, I, our concerns about, you know, safety for kids and that kind of thing um, would be lessened. We wouldn't be as concerned because we would we would see that we prepared the, the students to to know it, how to make good choices and, and, and to avoid um, the bad choices of others, I guess. Yeah, I um, just want to say that I agree with Ken's saying that I think the, the, the technology is not necessarily the uh, issue. It's about that conversation. Um, you know, a lot of talk about digital citizenship and things of that nature. And so why um, is it free from danger? Um, no, I mean, of course not. But uh, can we can we create where uh, and can we help students become um, good decision makers? Then absolutely. I, mean, I think that that's uh, if a kid's going to make a mistake in, in the digital world, um, I would rather them make it in the confines of our schools than when they're an adult and it costs them their job. And uh, so now it's, it's never 100% uh, free from danger, but we can do things that I think um, help keep our students as safe as we can, like with any, uh, any type of technology. Go ahead, Krista. Okay, thank you. You know, I just, um, as I wrote, I am uh, a great fan of technology. Now I see Peggy saying about the fake, uh, fake Facebook. Yes, I do have seen that because I have been in the iPad and uh, they showed that to us. Uh, the point is, uh, do you see that we should provide to all the teaching uh, community kind of, uh, let's say, strong background in order to understand that technology that goes around because, you know, too many things happen and uh, I think people are not able to follow them all. Do you think that we should provide, let's say, background to them? I'm not sure I, I fully understand the question, but I'm, I'm going to take a stab at it anyway. Uh, the, uh, I, I, part of I, part of what I'm hearing is, you know, about teachers being being sort of prepared to have these conversations. Is, is this kind of getting at the right field before I go on? Like the background in um, preventing and keeping kids safe online and how to interact online for all right. teachers. Right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that is that is an issue, and I kind of I I hope I alluded to that earlier. But like we're, I mean, part of what we're trying very hard to do um, with our teachers is to invite them into these conversations, and they have to be conversations with all stakeholders because um, the only way to get people prepared to help kids is to have those conversations with with adults as well and get them to understand the ins and outs of, of responsible and um, valuable use of technology. We, uh, 
we worry sometimes that you know we get kids from um, universities who haven't got um, those kinds of experiences, that kind of knowledge as part of their tool belt. And you know, so how do we move all of our teachers to uh, be able to em embrace technology and use it not because it's technology, not because it's something on the side, but because it's it's the right tool for the job. And how do we get them to negotiate and navigate maybe some of those difficulties, like you know, you know, bad digital citizenship, bad choices um, digitally, and those kinds of things. And so I guess I mean that's part of what what Brett and I uh, are tasked with doing is having those conversations with teachers. Um, to kind of move them along, but you do it in a lot of different ways. I mean, you do it directly, but you also do it by um, inviting them into conversations about curriculum, and you invite them into conversations about you know the nature of learning, because when you start to realize that learning is um, best done in a learner-centered environment that is social and that is globally connected, then you start to realize that the right tools are the ones that I've been afraid of all along, I guess. And then once the teachers start embracing that, then they get the, the comfort level to be able to have those same conversations with students and to talk to students about how do I design a website responsibly, how do I use um, copyrighted material responsibly? How do I um, avoid broadcasting um, sensitive information on the web and those types of things? So one of our colleagues, Michelle Green, who's kind of one of our uh, digital citizen uh, gurus of our group, we were having a conversation the other day and she said that, you know, she really feels like that we if we're going to have students who are good digital citizenships, digital citizens, that we've got to first make sure that our teachers are. And I think that that's, um, that, that is part of the task of the leadership in today's uh, realm of education. Um, I recently interviewed Will Richardson, and he said that we, what every child needs is a disposition to learn, to be patient problem solvers, to understand and embrace failure. And if every child needs that, that first means that every adult needs that as well. And so we have to make sure that, that we never stop learning and that our teachers, um, you know, even though some of this might be fearful, some of them, that they've got to go into this uh, this digital realm and be learners there as well. So I think great points made by Tim on that. You know, it great, occurs to me that, th that it might really be, um, I mean, maybe the way to think about it is that it's not really a set of things that we can do to guarantee that everybody's, you know, got the right uh, dispositions even, as much as it's to create a, a, a culture in which people are going to allow each other to, ex to experiment, but with the, the goal of, of, you know, growing as learners. And so part of that just becomes creating this, I mean, and I think that's part of education's sort of general problem right now too is that, you know, we sometimes we make the mistake of um, assuming that a set of rules or benchmarks or, you know, if we can get everybody on the exact same page, then we will make education work and, and be functional. But that's not the nature of learning. The nature of learning is much messier and really it's not about a, a, a set of, of, you know, regulations or, or, or whatever. I mean, it's, it's a, our standards even. It's, it's really about a culture of inquisitiveness and, and I, I really like what you just said about what Will Richardson said. I mean, you know, it, it is about being um, learners. Great questions. Thank you for asking. Are there any other questions that I might have missed or that you would like to ask before we um, 
let Brett and Tim go for the day. Looks like the questions have kind of winded, have uh, wound down. And let me go to your contact information. Do you have that listed somewhere? Well, we have it in the um, live binder. It's in the live binder. Yeah. yeah. So they can contact you um, if they have questions or if something comes up, and they can always contact you sure. on Twitter. Let me get the live binder information and uh, email you and so forth. If if, some, if something comes up at a later time. And we want to thank you so much for joining us. And remember, we will see you on June the 2nd with Travis Allen and the iSchool initiative that he developed. And that's going to be a fascinating session. You'll definitely want to tune in for that. And both of those are their um, Twitter uh, usernames, and that is Tim's email address that he uses. So you, if you have a question that you think of later on, you can play this back and you can access their information or access the live binder at any time. And this information, the live binder, will be posted on our live um, website on the archives and resources page. And let me get that for you. It will be posted. Uh, the full recording will be posted in, in a few minutes. And then we post the MP4 and so forth and the chat log and all that stuff kind of later on throughout the weekend. So you can look for those resources to be posted this weekend. And you can um, check those out throughout the weekend and so forth. So. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for taking time. I know that there's a lot of competition and a lot of things going on today, a lot of conferences. So <laughs> thank you again, everybody. Thank you, Brett and Tim, for taking time, and Tammy for the closed captioning, and Lori for helping out. Have a great weekend, everybody, and Memorial Day, and we will see you on June the 2nd. Take care, everybody. See you online.